welcome to lecture 3 of the second module of this course on accelerator physics. So here again we will learn about RF acceleration. But before that let us uh, just revise what we did in the last lecture. So we saw that how with time varying fields a small voltage can be used uh, repeatedly to accelerate to high energies by successively accelerating charged particles over many gaps. So unlike a DC accelerator we need not generate a very high voltage. Uh, we can generate a small voltage and uh, use it several times for accelerating to high energies. The necessary condition is isochronism that means particle arrives at each gap at the right time to see the right phase of the electric field and get accelerated. And uh, there should be a component of electric field in the direction of velocity of the beam. So without isochronism we can get acceleration. Uh, in any of the gaps but if you want to uh, achieve sustained acceleration over several gaps then isochronism is important. So this is known as the principle of successive acceleration. We do not use the entire positive cycle for acceleration, we use only a small portion uh, because if you use the entire cycle then you will get a large uh, deviation in kinetic energy for the particles which we do not want. Also uh, we saw that entire even though the entire positive cycle produces acceleration in this region that means from 0 to pi by 2 there is no phase stability. So if you want to accelerate with phase stability you have to choose your synchronous phase as lying between minus pi by 2 and 0. So the synchronous phase must be chosen to lie between minus pi by 2 and 0. We also saw that the energy gain in a time varying field is less than the energy gain in a DC field by a factor of t where t is known as the transit time factor. So it is a dimensionless uh, quantity and it comes into picture because the charged particles take a finite time to transit over the uh, gap and during that time the field in the gap is varying with time. So that is why this transit time factor comes into picture and t is always less than 1. So the energy gain in an RF field is always less than the energy gain in a DC field. We also saw that the uh, first accelerator which was uh, designed by Ising and Woodrow, it had issues when accelerating to higher energies. Okay, because there an evacuated glass cylinder was used and inside that there were drift tubes to which voltage was applied directly. So since voltage was applied directly to the, uh, to the drift tubes what happened was that uh, so there the cell length was equal to beta lambda by 2. So now as beta increased in order to keep the cell length reasonable lambda had to be decreased or in other words the frequency had to be increased and at higher frequencies the system started radiating like an antenna. So when the length of the drift tubes becomes comparable to the wavelength of the applied RF, instead of storing energy in the gap the uh, drift tubes start radiating energy. So the structure failed to accelerate charged particles at higher energies. So Vidro uh, to overcome this problem Alvarez came up with a solution. He said to use the electric fields associated with the electromagnetic waves. Okay, Now you know that we saw in the last lecture that electromagnetic uh, waves can be uh, so you can derive it from the Maxwell's equation in free space. So they are TEM type of waves and they have an electric field and magnetic field associated with it. So he said that use the electric fields associated with the electromagnetic wave inside a high Q cavity. So we will see over uh, the next few lectures that how inside a high Q cavity the electric field of the electromagnetic wave can be used for acceleration. So just summarizing again from the last lecture electromagnetic waves in free space are transverse electric uh, magnetic waves. So here the electric field, the magnetic field and the propagation constant they are mutually perpendicular to each other okay. So uh, electric field has a sinusoidal variation with time. However uh, 
they cannot these electromagnetic waves in free space they cannot be used for acceleration because for interaction of the wave with the beam the uh, the beam should be propagating in the so beam is propagating in the direction of the electromagnetic wave and electric field will always be perpendicular to the uh, beam so that is why e dot v is equal to zero so that is why we will not get any acceleration using a electromagnetic wave in free space okay now let's see what happens to electromagnetic waves uh, bounded by conducting boundaries okay so let's say we have this electromagnetic wave which is propagating with a propagation constant k and now on both these sides i put conducting boundaries okay so this this is a conductor so now what happens now after this it the wave can no longer propagate so it gets reflected so it will travel inside this uh, by multiple reflections so it will travel like this okay now i can have two cases here okay so in the first case let me call it tm transverse magnetic the magnetic field is transverse so it's coming out of the screen the magnetic field is transverse to the direction of propagation okay the net direction of propagation is now k prime which is in this direction because the wave is now traveling with multiple reflections the net direction will be k prime which is this direction so uh, let's see the tm wave so here the magnetic field is perpendicular to the direction of propagation okay so since the electric field magnetic field and k vector are mutually perpendicular so the electric field in this case will be in this direction okay now i can resolve this electric field such that i have a component which i call e parallel and e perpendicular so parallel to the direction of propagation and perpendicular to the direction of propagation so now i see that when this electromagnetic wave is traveling inside the space bounded by conducting boundaries for the tm wave i have been able to generate a component of electric field along the direction of propagation okay so there is a now a component of electric field in the direction of propagation so if i put in let's say a beam here then at least my this condition that the electric field and the uh, should be along the direction of velocity of the beam is satisfied so i may be able to use this for acceleration now we can have another case which is the te wave so here e is perpendicular to k prime so here the again the wave is traveling uh, by multiple reflections inside this uh, medium Uh, bounded by the conducting boundaries now here the electric field is perpendicular to the direction of uh, propagation it is perpendicular to the direction of propagation it is coming out of the screen in this case the magnetic field will be in this direction since e b and k have to be mutually perpendicular so the magnetic field will be like this and i can resolve the magnetic field again into two components b parallel and b perpendicular so i have a component of magnetic field in the direction of propagation but this will not help me in acceleration here the electric field is still perpendicular to the direction of propagation so if i put in a charge particle beam here it will always see an electric field which is perpendicular to the velocity of the charge particle so i will not be able to use this for acceleration okay so in free space bounded by conducting boundaries electromagnetic waves they now propagate as tm or te waves they do not propagate as tem waves in free space the electromagnetic wave was propagating as a tem wave but now when it is in a space bounded by conducting boundaries they are going to be propagating as tm or te waves so in tm waves there is a component of electric field so there is this component of electric field along the direction of propagation okay so it may be possible okay let's see whether it is actually possible for now let's say it may be possible to use tm waves for acceleration so before proceeding ahead let us uh, understand the difference between the traveling waves and standing waves in a simple one dimension system so a uh, traveling wave in one direction uh, here it is shown by the green curve here 
so it is traveling in the forward direction the expression is written like this so it is a propagating wave in the x direction so this wave hits the boundary and it is reflected back the reflected uh, reflected wave is the blue wave so it can be uh, written like this it is still a traveling wave so here you can see that it is traveling in the x direction the resultant wave is in the uh, is a superposition of the two waves the two standing waves so if you take the uh, you simply add up the two here the travel uh, the forward wave and the reflected wave so you will get the uh, standing you will get a standing wave which is the net resultant wave so here if you simplify this and rearrange uh, we see that the space variation and time variation are separated so it is a standing wave this wave the red wave is not propagating with time it is uh, only oscillating with time so there are uh, there are locations uh, here where the amplitude is zero and uh, at certain so these are known as nodes and there are uh, locations where the amplitude is maximum and oscillating with time at other locations the amplitude is uh, in between zero and the maximum amplitude but the frequency of oscillation of all the points is the same so this is a standing wave we can find out the location of the nodes and the anti nodes so for the nodes the motion is zero so y is equal to 0 so if you put y is equal to 0 here so you get kx is equal to 0 pi 2 pi and so on or in other words x is equal to 0 lambda by 2 lambda 3 lambda by 2 and so on similarly so there is no motion of these points similarly we can find out the location of the points with maximum amplitudes that is y is equal to 2a so if you substitute y is equal to 2a so you get kx as equal to pi by 2 3 pi by 2 and so on so these are at locations x is equal to lambda by 4 x is equal to 3 lambda by 4 and so on so these uh, so this corresponds to a traveling wave and this corresponds to a standing wave now uh, in order to understand the uh, electromagnetic the behavior of the electromagnetic waves in a cavity uh, we need to understand the concept of modes okay so let's first consider a very simplistic system a mechanical system so let's consider the waves in a string so suppose you have a way uh, you have a string and you simply uh, swing it like this so what you get is a traveling wave like this okay so it has an expression which is like this now suppose you apply a boundary condition that the uh, string is fixed at both the ends okay now it is no longer a uh, it is no longer a traveling wave because now you have applied these uh, boundary condition okay that the displacement at both these ends is zero so not all waves are allowed it's no longer a traveling wave so only certain uh, uh, certain waves or wavelengths that just fit in only they are allowed okay so you can have a case like this okay where your l is equal to your lambda by 2 this is lambda by 2 this is known as the fundamental mode you can calculate the frequency of the fundamental mode which is v by 2l you can have another case where l is equal to lambda still it is satisfying the boundary condition that the displacement at the two ends is zero okay so you can have a condition where uh, uh, l is equal to lambda so this is known as the second harmonic again you can calculate the frequency it is v by l two times the frequency of the fundamental mode another another uh, condition that you can get is l is equal to 3 lambda by 2 so this is 3 lambda by 2 and this is equal to l so this is the third harmonic okay and again um, you can calculate the frequency it is three times the fundamental frequency and so on so now when you have applied this boundary condition that the ends of the string are fixed okay they have always to satisfy this boundary condition not all wavelengths are allowed only those wavelengths that satisfy the boundary condition only they are allowed okay so each mode of vibration here Okay. this each of these modes 
of vibration this is called a mode and associated with each mode there is a fixed field pattern so for example for this the field pattern is like this so this is varying with time there is time variation but no space variation and so with each mode this is the first mode is, or the fundamental mode then the second harmonic third harmonic and so on associated with each mode there is a fixed field pattern and a fixed frequency okay also if you see the frequencies of the higher modes they are integral multiples of the fundamental mode okay and the fundamental mode if uh, frequency if you see it depends upon the dimensions of the system so this length here is l so it depends upon the dimensions of the system so when you apply boundary conditions to a traveling wave you get what is known as modes so the first mode is the fundamental mode it has a frequency that depends only on its dimensions okay so you see it is depending only on the dimension the frequencies of the higher order modes they are integral multiples of the fundamental modes so n is an integer here so it is uh, integral multiple of the fundamental mode then all points on the string they for they will oscillate at the same frequency but different amplitude so this point for example will uh, it is fixed now this will oscillate at for at a different amplitude as compared to this point but at the same frequency so associated with each mode is a fixed field pattern and a fixed frequency so applying boundaries has now made this traveling wave into a standing wave and in the direction that the boundaries have been applied it has become a standing wave and uh, it can take only certain discrete wavelengths so similarly when you have electromagnetic waves and they are put inside a region bounded by conducting boundaries okay they have to satisfy the boundary conditions at the boundaries and modes are formed so the, uh, for the case of electromagnetic waves also it is a similar case that when you so an electromagnetic wave in free space it's a traveling wave when you put it in a region with conducting boundaries at the boundary of the conductors it has to satisfy certain boundary conditions so it satisfies those boundary conditions and in that direction it becomes a static wave okay so what are the boundary conditions so for a perfect conductor where the conductivity is uh, infinite so at the boundary of the uh, conductor the fields cannot penetrate inside the conductor okay so at the boundary of the conductor we have the tangential component that means the component which is parallel to the boundary and the normal component the that means the component which is perpendicular to the boundary so the boundary conditions uh, at this interface of conductor and free space are the tangential component at the surface of the conducting plane is zero that means e tangential is equal to zero okay e normal e normal is allowed e normal is allowed there is no problem with e normal but e tangential is equal to zero e normal is not equal to zero okay similarly for magnetic field the normal component of magnetic field at the surface of the conducting plane is zero so we have b normal is equal to zero okay now b tangential is not equal to zero so this is the boundary condition for electric field and magnetic field whenever it comes at the boundary of a conducting surface okay so in order to understand uh, the propagation of uh, electromagnetic waves in conducting boundaries let us first consider a very simple case where we are applying boundaries only in one dimension okay so here we have two infinite parallel conductors okay so these are two infinite parallel conducting planes okay in the y direction so there is one at y is equal to 0 and there is another one at y is equal to a so these are infinite conducting parallel planes okay it's a hypothetical system but this is just to understand the concept of uh, the propagation of electromagnetic waves so let's say we have an incident wave so the incident wave can be represented by this expression it's a traveling wave so we've already derived the expression so uh 
we have an incident wave now for simplicity let's take that the incident wave so this is the direction of propagation okay it is in the yz plane so you can see from here it is in the yz plane okay so k is given by k this this angle is theta so this is k cos theta and this is k sin theta so you can write this as k k is k can be written as k cos theta y plus k sin theta unit vector z where k is omega by c where omega is the frequency of the wave in free space and c is the velocity of light so this is the expression for the electromagnetic wave and it is uh, traveling uh, the propagation constant the direction is given as this okay so here k dot r r is simply the position vector so you can write it as x unit vector x plus y unit vector y plus z unit vector z so simply multiply k dot r okay and you will get this expression so you can see that it is a traveling wave in the y direction and in the z direction okay so it's a traveling wave in both y direction and z direction so uh, this wave now it will travel by multiple reflection so it will go like this and then it will get reflected it will get reflected so the net direction of propagation will now be along z okay so let this represented wave uh, reflected wave let me represent it by this wave here okay so uh, it will make the same angle theta here uh, with the y axis okay and uh, i can write this uh, for the reflected wave i can write the wave as uh, j k prime dot r minus omega t okay so for k prime the missing the medium is the same so there amplitudes will be the same okay and uh, i can write this as now this will be so if this angle is theta this will be minus uh, uh, k cos theta and this will be k sin theta again multiplying by the position vector the reflected wave will have a form like this okay now for this uh, uh, electro for this two polarizations of the electromagnetic wave are possible okay so this is the uh, this is the electromagnetic wave propagating in this direction now i can have an electric field so i can have an electric field which is along the x direction okay so the, the uh, for this wave i can have a case where the electric field is along the x direction okay so this is transverse to the direction of propagation so i called it the te wave okay i can also have i can also have the magnetic field along uh, the x direction in this case the magnetic field is perpendicular to the direction of propagation so this is known as the tm type of wave so both cases are possible i can have either a te wave or i can have a tm wave depending on what is the direction of e or b